All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. And we are indeed excited to be here this morning, ready for our 9.30 virtual hour of worship in which we go to the shepherd's table and return here back to the preaching lab. And uh, oftentimes, uh, it couldn't be confusing for some uh, who are used to just going into worship. We sing a song, uh, we do a prayer, we do a scripture, and then we have a word. But we want people to be able to think through what it is that they're doing. Think through how it is that you apply, what it is that you know God is saying to you. And then you're able to do what God needs you to do. And then you have the attachments. And then you have the testimonies. And then you really have a reason to Worship and what I found about worship is very hard to worship when you really don't know what God has done for you. It's very hard to worship when you haven't seen God come through for you. It's very hard to worship when you really don't know God, but when you know God and you know God will come through and you know God to be a healer and you know God to be a provider and you know God to be a sustainer and you know God to be a way maker and you know God to be a God that does miracles and you know God to be a God that has not left you and has never failed you, then it's very easy to open up your mouth. It doesn't matter where you are, driving down the highway, in your bathroom, in the kitchen, wherever you are. And certainly when we get in the sanctuary and there's other folk that have the same testimony, it's real easy to worship the Lord. It's real easy to praise the Lord. And so let me see wherever you are, how easy is it for you to praise the Lord? The easiness to praising the Lord does what it does because and comes how it comes because of our obedience to the Lord because when the Lord shows up and shows out in your life uh, that's why we then begin to say when I look back over my life and I think things over something inside of me says hallelujah why because I look back over my life and there were times in which I thought I was stuck there were times in which I thought it was over but when I look back over those times the Lord always showed up the Lord always came through. The Lord always made a way. And so never should there be a time now where I catch myself so much in despair, so discouraged and so frustrated that I forget that the Lord always makes a way. And so that's why they say, I will bless the name of the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. There should never be a time in which I am stuck without praise in my mouth because there's never a time in which God is not working on my behalf. And so come on for the people of God that know God, that really want to know God, that are trying to get to know God, those that don't know God but want to get him. This is what the Bible says. He inhabits the praises of his people. How do you praise him? Go ahead and thank him for the goodness. Go ahead and thank him for providing. Go ahead and thank him for bringing you through. Go ahead and thank him for getting you over Go ahead and thank him for keeping your mind. Go ahead and thank him for healing you. Go ahead and thank him for making a way for you. Go ahead and thank him for keeping your children. Go ahead and thank him for protecting you. Go ahead and thank him. And as you do that, you'll find yourself in worship and God will begin to speak to you. And when he does, that's when we need you to move. And so we come to the shepherd's table to talk about how do we move according to what God says? Because no matter how we worship and no matter what comes out of our mouths, there has to be certain actions attached to our belief. And if that's not the case, then we can't say we're practicing Christians. And so come on, let's get ourselves ready to go to the shepherd's table, then back to the preaching lab on this Pentecost Sunday. And what does that mean? That means the Lord has promised to give you every power you need to do everything he needs of you. And so today, as we celebrate the Holy Spirit as we celebrate the birth of the church, as we celebrate what can happen when God empowers you, uh, let's get to this shepherd's table and let's have an awesome day of worship. Go ahead and like, go ahead and share, and when you're watching, go ahead and comment so we know that you're there and that others can be in tune with you in this virtual space. Hallelujah. <laughs> I need help with processing sooner. I need help with just, just doing it. When he say, do this, I say, okay, and do it right away. All right. So you need help doing what it is God says do when God says it. 
immediately. Immediately. So you need help helping and moving with the yeah. urgency. Yeah. yeah. Not having to think about it. I know the blessings. I know things will work out. I just need to be, I just need to say, okay. Okay. All right. And so everybody that watched the ABCs of a DOA lifestyle, we're going to do a quiz. What letter does she need to work on? Everybody say the end. Narrow the time between your fleshly response and your godly response. All right. God says, I set a table before you in front of your enemies. First, you'll have to discern my voice. Ask and believe with all your heart and choose. Choose as if you have no choice. Signs, wonders, and miracles with faith the size of mustard seeds. And even though mustard seeds are really little, God says, that's all I need for you to trust in me. Luckily, I've exhausted all my human resources. From the marks I missed, I repent and no longer live with remorse. Because God forgives when I don't. And still God will when I won't. A lot of people don't want to sow and then reap. I'm just trying to reap what I've sown. The good me, that is. The me who forgave when I couldn't forgive. The me who lived outside of my flesh when I was drowning in my head. The me, that little girl who became bitter because she was really scared. The me who laid all down and said, God, have my heart. It's all yours. Here it is. A seat at the shepherd table, they say, where you should have no fear. Will we take it day by day till it's year by year? A seat at the shepherd table, I say, wait, let me grab you a chair. Will we walk by faith from God's word that we hear? Loud and clear. All right, everybody. So here we are now at the shepherd's table. Uh, and indeed, we're grateful for every person that comes to the shepherd's table. And I promise you, this is my promise to you. If you come to the shepherd's table, something is going to click for your faith. Something is going to click in how you operate when you leave here. And some of y'all say, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, but I'm just telling you, when you get here, uh, something is going to click. Something is going to change because you can talk all of that you want to talk before you get here. Then you get here. Then you get nervous. Then you get there. Then you. But it's all about us simply learning how to, one, discern the voice of the Lord, two, be obedient so God can do all that he wants to do for you. We have complicated church so much that we have all of these other things that we're trying to do. And at the end of the day, no matter how many services we have, no matter how long the service is, no matter if we got a 15,000 member choir or a two member choir, no matter how many ushers at the door, no matter how many positions we have, no matter how many ministries we have, no matter what happens in church, whether we talk in tongues, swing from chandeliers, or we stand up and sit down and don't move and don't make a sound, no matter how you do church, when that worship experience is over, you still got to know what God says, and you still have to do it if it's going to make any difference in your life. Here we are, learning how to discern and be obedient to what God says, so he can then bless us, and then we can walk around looking like the church, and people are excited about the church. And so we bring people here to talk about that journey. And so today I have Miss Nicole... I would go call. I don't know which one. What am I? What am I saying? Nicole, what? White. Nicole. Nicole White. All right. Nicole. <laughs> Nicole White. Uh, all right. And, and and so as we come in today, uh, I know you have an experience with the Lord. I know you've felt the Lord. The Lord. I know you have seen the Lord work in your life, and because of that. I have to assume you have a real relationship with the Lord. I do. Right? I do. Uh, and, and because that's the case, most of us don't get to know the Lord until we got to go through something. Right? And, and so once we go through something, then we really get to know the Lord. Right? Um, and so tell us how you got to know the Lord for real, for real. So we've always grown up in church. My mom always had us at church. Uh, we were I did everything except for being an usher, you know, when I was younger. 
Um, so I've always known the Lord, but it's a, it's something different, you know, when you're bringing your children to church and then as you start to go through adult life, and like you said, you start to go through things and then you realize, that, you know, that, that you do need God. And then, you know, life starts to life, you know, this new, this new phrase of lifing. <laughs> so, um, it, for me, there were several things that actually happened all at one time. Um, my children's father and I started to, to break up. Um, and so, you know, we began to part ways and then all of that also started to take a toll on my health. But I will say that I was still a faithful Christian, you know, before that. Um, but I was a faithful Christian. You know, everybody just knew I went to church because that's just, you know, what I did. And then, um, of course, the cancer came. Um, back then it wasn't called that. It was called the C word. Um, and it was like from that point, I was like, I'm healed. I'm, al I'm already healed. But I went, you know, through I went through a lot of, with my treatments and um, I went through coming to church and just having people in my corner um, praying for me. Um, and then I always knew I was healed, but I was really healed. Um, so from that point forward, my worship has always been real. Like I can just sit here and cry now because that's my worship. Um, and then from there, I can just say, you know, my children, just things have happened. I, I was in a car accident. I really thought we had died, but the Lord saved me. Um, just things just, you know, you talk about that often when you're obedient and you just follow and you follow things literally fall into place. Absolutely awesome. So when you follow what God says, things literally fall into place uh, that you didn't know where they were falling from nor what place they needed to hit, but they all line up appropriately when you do what God says. Now, I know that uh, some of the terminology I may use sometimes is tricky for people because they say, uh-uh, how you going to say I'm this and I'm not this? You, <laughs> you don't know what my relationship with the Lord is. Let me just suggest this to everybody. If you are obedient, then God will make sure certain things happen in your life. All right. Uh, and so I don't have to argue that. Nobody has to argue that. We all are on agreement with that. The problem is, how does one know when they're being obedient? Well, the only judge of that is you and God. And at the end of the day, you're right. How can I determine whether or not you're being obedient? I can't. But we can all see attachments. <laughs> we can all see how indeed yep. what is on your life, what's coming out of your mouth, what's coming out of your heart. We can all see the fruit of your relationship with the Lord. So listen, when God speaks, then we have to be obedient, then God attaches. How do you know when God is speaking to you? <laughs> so, you know those, those times in the morning, you know, when you just wake up? That's, you know, God is speaking. God is telling me. Or sometimes when I go to sleep at night and I'm thinking about my day, I can hear, you know, God saying, you know, this is what you have to do. This is what you should have done. <laughs> um, you know, and then it, it, it's kind of like a talk, you know. It, you're almost talking to yourself, but it's not you talking to yourself. You're really talking to God, and you're just having a conversation. Um, but, but most of the time, it's in the morning, right? So God speaks to you in the morning, and it said, you said, it feels like you're almost talking to yes. yourself, right? And, and so it, it almost feels like this inner dialogue, which means that it's not necessarily this voice that you're hearing, but it's something that you feel. Yes. And you're having this, this feeling conversation. I feel like God is saying this. I feel like God is saying that. So this is what obedience E is then. Obedience is responding to that inner feeling that you should, should not do certain things. And that's how God speaks. Now, once you discern that, oftentimes you say, all right, God, I heard you. <laughs> uh, but we're not ready to necessarily move. We're not really yeah. necessarily ready to do. Yeah. And that's where I then posit the ideology of being a practicing Christian. Mm -hmm. All right? So we can... We can play semantics all day and we can play church all day. 
But how do you call yourself a Christian if when God says do something and you represent Christ, you don't do it? Now, everybody can say, oh, well, no, grace, mercy, but all of that's part of it, yes. But what we're trying to get everybody to do is not live off grace and mercy, but get all that God has for you. We don't want you living off grace and mercy. That's like you living off a baby milk all your life. Come on now. There's got to be more than life for you than just living off grace and mercy and a bottle. Let's, we, we want you to grow so you can experience all that God says. And what's required to do that is to move when you feel God saying move. So what's the hardest part now? Do you have in these dialogues, uh, right? And so everybody can say, I heard God talking to me. I talk to God every day, morning, noon, and night. Uh, but then what are you doing in response to that? Uh... <laughs> Because yeah, because can't nobody tell me about my relationship to the Lord. You're absolutely right, ma'am. Absolutely right, sir. Clearly, God is talking to you, but clearly there's some disobedience, maybe. Because when God speaks, if we do, then something's supposed to show. So when we begin to look at this, what's the hardest part for you about being obedient? Because clearly you're hearing God. Yeah. So, as I always say, it's not hard to know what God is saying. The hardest thing is to be obedient. So, what's the hardest part about that? The hardest part is being ready to do what was discussed. <laughs> being and and it being what you want it to be, you know, because we all know that what we want is not necessarily what's supposed to be for us. Hold on, let me just make sure I heard what you said. Two things. First of all, I heard what you said, God. I don't know if I'm ready to do what you said. One. Okay. Two, I heard what you said, God, but I'm not sure it's going to lead to what I want. Okay, good. So, not sure if I'm ready to do what you said, and I'm not sure if it's going to lead to what I want. Ooh. And so, and so I, I'm glad. See, this helps people, right? Because this is not no contrived conversation. We didn't rehearse the conversation. We just are uh, in the shepherd's table having a real conversation about what it really means to do what God says. And that's to hear him and then move accordingly. So I don't know if I'm ready. What? How do you decide when you're ready to do what God says? And so that's the thing, because I also know that when you don't do what you're supposed to do, the rest of it doesn't go together. So then why would you ever not be ready to do what God says do? <laughs> well, because it's not what I want. I mean, when you, when you set it up in your mind to be a certain way, you think it's going to go, you know, one way. And so, you know, but then when you're having this talk and you realize it's going to go left instead of right, it, it takes you a minute. You know, it takes you a minute to kind of think it through, process it through, and, and be ready. But I also know that you can't play with God. You know, I know I know these things. So You know them. Yeah, I know it. I know I can't play with God. Play I with know God. when I do what God says do, it all works out. But I'm still not ready. Not ready. So I got to process these things. How is it that we process and move disobediently quicker than we process and move obediently? I, I really don't. I get it from a fleshly standpoint, but once we then know the Lord, have seen the Lord move, that's when I don't get it. And so a lot of people say, well, pastor, you got to be a little bit more patient with this. You got to, uh, <laughs> but see, this is the thing now. Uh, it would be different if you were fresh off the street, had never known the Lord. This is the first day you met the Lord and never heard about a man named Jesus. That's not the case for most of us. We know the Lord. We've experienced the Lord. He's proven himself to us. And here it is. We're still talking about the need to process getting ready for what? For what he's always done for us. Getting ready for what? For miracles. Getting ready for what? For him to make a way out. How do you need to get ready for that? <laughs> y'all will jump out of town quicker than y'all will do what God says. Uh, somebody will call you and say, let's go down to Florida. Okay, let me get my bags. No questions <laughs> asked. Now the Lord says something, you be like, oh, let me think about it. You don't even think about it when you say, let me think about it. You just are pausing and trying to draw some time. 
I don't even want to think about it. So I say I'm going to think about it, but I don't really want to think about it. So I wait a whole week before I even think about it. Yeah. Then when I'm asked about it, you say, nah, I'm still thinking about it. Give me some time. Stop rushing me. Be patient with me. Now the girl called and said, let's go to Florida. You said, let's go. Uh, God calls uh, and you say, I'm thinking about it. And you haven't even thought about it in the week. Didn't want to declare that somebody's not being patient with you because you haven't thought about it in the week and they are looking for an answer. And so... You have to get ready for it. And just tell me what your process again is of getting ready. You're thinking through your processing. What are you processing? Well, so for that, it doesn't take me that long because, like I said, I already know. You know, like, I, I already know. I'm blessed, and I can see it in so many different ways. Um, so it doesn't take me that long. Okay. No, it don't take me that long. But I will, you know, the conversation might be a little long, like, oh, cheese and crackers. Um, it, you know, and then I... You know, I'm constantly talking and then, you know, we work it through so that, you know, I can do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Wait, you guys probably can't hear this. <sighs> they heard that. <laughs> I, hold, I held my microphone up to my mouth so we can hear. <sighs> we, we can hear all of that. Uh, now, listen to me. All I want you all to understand is this. L she used the phrase, life will life. life will life. Life never fails to life. Life is never late in lifing. Which means if you're going to be a Christian, you can't be late in faithing. Life is not late. The devil is not late. Challenges don't show up late. They show up on time. They do their job. Now, for us, we think we got time. We can show up when we want to show up, do it how we want to do it. Nobody else in any realm believes that but us. Yeah. And so what I'm asking you to consider is this. What does it mean to do what it is that God is saying do obediently and urgently? Why urgently, Pastor? You don't know how much time you got. You don't know what's really rotten on your obedience in this moment, not next week, this moment right now. And so, yeah, my passion is for you to get all God has for you. And my passion is because I see what it looks like for people to know God but not have what God has for them. It's pitiful. It doesn't look good on you. And so I want you to look good. I want you to be good. I want you to feel good because that's what God has for you. And so, no, I don't apologize for loving you enough to want more for you. And so when we begin to look at this, you said, I'm not sure I'm ready, but I'm also not sure it's going to lead to what I want. Let me ask you this before we leave from this table. Has God ever exceeded your wants? Yes. He has. Yeah. Did you have to ask him to exceed your wants? No. He just did it. He just did it. Why? You don't even know why, do you? Do you know why he exceeded your wants? Because I did as he asked. Has he exceeded your wants when you didn't do what he asked? Yes. So that's not the reason. God is just God. He does it like that. So if indeed God exceeds your wants, You've been obedient at times, and he's done it. Mm -hmm. You've been disobedient at times, and he's done it. Mm -hmm. So why is it that all of a sudden you think, I might need to pause because I'm not sure this is going to equal what I want. Tell me what's going on in your mind when you're thinking that. If you've seen the Lord do more than what you want in disobedience and obedience, which means if that's the formula, if we set up a math equation, teacher, he does it when I'm disobedient. He does it when I'm, out, I'm obedient. Wouldn't that then mean God always does more than I want? That's just my math brain working. Maybe I'm off. But he always does more than we want. So when you start saying, I'm not sure this is going to equal what I want, what does that mean? <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs>
when you <laughs> okay so when you when you want something mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's a fleshly thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fleshly thing. You know, when you when you want something, you know, and and you you're not quite ready to part with it. I mean, I, I think that that would be the truth of anybody. You know, when you want something, that's what you want. You know, and if it takes you a minute, it's just you know, like a child, I I want that right now, even though I do, you know, I do know of the goodness of God. I really do. Um, but when you but when you process this and you thought this, you know, to come back and be like, no, that's not it. It takes you a minute. You know, it, it, it does. And I think that that's just being honest. I think that that's, that's just probably what everybody feels. I'm not saying that I'm not going to do, you know, but, you know, I will say, gosh, <laughs> you know, I thought it would go this way. Um, but now I see it's going to go this way. I think that. For the most part, that's it. Okay, so basically she said, in a roundabout way, Pastor, I'm just struggling with my flesh. And then when I say that you need to deny your flesh, oh, see now, Pastor, you you, you being too harsh. You being, and, and, and all I'm trying to tell all of us now is every single time somebody gets up here on this stage or has to answer the question as to why disobedience is running rampant in any of our lives, it's always because you know it's flesh and we're humans, Pastor. Don't act like you're perfect. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not acting anything. I'm just here to be the messenger to tell us if we want all God has for us, then what? You have to learn how to deny your flesh because your flesh is acting very ignorant. She said, I know the Lord. She said, I know he makes a way. She said, he does more than I want when I'm disobedient, more than I want when I'm obedient. She said, God is good. She said, I've been doing this all my life. But then her flesh says, no, that's not a good idea. That's just as ignorant as ignorant can be. The, you're supposed to do better when you know better. And here comes your flesh saying, you know better, but let's not do better. And then we got the nerve to say, now, pastor, that's okay. Let us be. Let us, let us be, pastor. Don't, don't mess with us. Let us live in our flesh a little while longer. Because, you know, we only live this life once. Let me enjoy it. I want you to enjoy it. And I want you to get everything that you're supposed to get out of life. What you're asking for is let me get some more misery. Let me get some more sleepless nights. Let me get some more stuff that messes with me. My marriage, my children, my career, my money, my health. Let me get some more stuff that challenges my life because when I'm disobedient, that's all that I'm inviting into my life. And so when I say, please be obedient, I'm not judging you. I'm asking myself the same thing. Y'all don't think I get frustrated myself? Come on, self. And so that's why you have to deny yourself. That's why we talk about it so much. And so when we come to this table, it's the shepherd's table because I, as the shepherd, are trying to lead the sheep to green pastures to the place where God has everything you want and as sheep we don't always want to do what the shepherd suggests that's the nature of being the sheep but that's why God sends what shepherds and that's why sheep need shepherds and that's why you ought to come to the shepherd's table too all right uh, and so Miss Nicole White all right whatever you say <laughs> Miss Nicole uh, we are going to look right there in that camera. And so somebody is suggesting, all right, I hear all of that, but you know, I'm not ready to be obedient now. What's your best pitch to help somebody to live a lifestyle that is one discerning of what God says and obedient to what that is, to move accordingly to what that is so they can get all God has? Now, not tomorrow, not when they feel like it, not when they get ready. But right now, what's your best pitch for the immediacy of moving into a DOA lifestyle? I would say that when you do follow God and you do as and you do as you have been told to do, 
things simply fall into place. The sky opens up and the blessings come down. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I'm going to listen to this pastor, right? She, she knows what she's talking about. Uh, and so I look forward to you all discerning what God says and being obedient so that God can open up the windows and pour you out a blessing that you don't even know you have room enough to receive. And so come on now, let's make it over to the preaching lab on this Pentecost Sunday and really do what it is God says do. Hallelujah. everybody here we are in the preaching lab today and we are indeed grateful on this Pentecost Sunday uh, shepherd's table edition to be in the preaching lab and as we come into the preaching lab uh, we believe that the Lord is always trying to speak to us and we're so grateful for uh, our guest at the shepherd's table and we're so grateful for what we have gleaned from that time it's something uh, to be able to do what it is that God says. And when we do, uh, it's something that God really enjoys doing, and that's blessing the people who are obedient. He really does reward obedience. Uh, and that's the crazy part about it because so many disobedient people uh, are indeed in love with the Lord because even in their disobedience, somehow or another, the Lord figures out a way to bless them. Uh, but I'm so grateful that we are trying to grow into an obedient people of God uh, that we might see the even greater blessings that he has for us. And one of those blessings that God has for us, uh, that he indeed sent the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and that is the gift that's to help us to remember everything that he said. So even when we are trying to be disobedient, the reason we hear what we hear and feel what we feel is because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit cannot blaspheme God. He won't lie on God. He won't put something in your spirit that's not of God. His job is to empower you to do all that God says. And so I pray that you can then begin to suggest, I got it, I got it, I got it. The Holy Spirit is not something that makes you talk in tongues. The Holy Spirit is something that empowers you and makes you be obedient. You can talk in tongues, you can dance and shout all you want to, uh, but you don't have the Holy Spirit if you can't do what God says do. Uh, the Holy Spirit reminds you and empowers you to do what God says do. And so today as we look for a word on this Pentecost Sunday about what the Holy Spirit is supposed to be doing. If we really had the Holy Spirit, there would be a revival in this world. If the Holy Spirit was really ran and rampant, as sometimes it does seemingly in people running around the church, dancing in the church, there would be more saved people and there would be more practicing Christians. And so I'm really praying this Pentecost Sunday that we really get the Holy Spirit. We allow ourselves to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and we allow ourselves to move according to the Holy Spirit. And so as we look forward today, here we find ourselves in John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Uh, and as we look for that word in John chapter 20, we want to look at verses 19 through 22. John chapter 20 verses 19 through 22 and it says this. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and showed them him showed them his side and then the disciples were glad when they saw the lord so jesus said to them again peace to you as the father has sent me i also send you and when he had said this he breathed on them 
and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you don't mind, I want to run back through this real quickly so we might understand our order of operation as we talked about on Wednesday in Bible study. If you didn't see that, you might want to go back and watch that. Uh, here it is. Jesus came, stood in the midst of some people who were scared. Why were they scared? Because they had a fear of the Jews. Why did they have a fear of the Jews? Because the Jews had just crucified Jesus. Why did they crucify Jesus? Because Jesus wasn't doing and being what they wanted him to do and to be. And why wasn't Jesus doing and being what he, they wanted him to be? Because they didn't want to change their belief system. They just wanted Jesus to be their protector. And I need some folk right about now just to stop with me and begin to understand that you can't just praise the Lord because he does what you want. You have to praise the Lord because he is who he is and he does what he does as God and not your personal genie. Uh, and we should be overwhelmingly glad uh, that he is not our personal genie because the truth of the matter is we want all manner of things and all manner of things are not good for us and so I'm glad that the Lord can't be manipulated I'm glad that the Lord can't be uh, uh, taken advantage of I'm glad that the Lord is not a sucker uh, like many of us think uh, but here it is uh, he goes through the process of dying for our sins and as he dies for our sins he gets gets back up on the third day and when he gets back up on the third day he meets some women at the tomb and they begin to go tell the disciples what's going on and in the midst the Lord begins to speak to the disciples and here we find in our text Jesus shows up amongst them after he's gotten back up from the dead after he's done just what he said after he's gone through after he struggled after he contained his emotions after he felt abandoned after he was betrayed after he was lonely after people did what they did to him he shows up uh, and uh, when he shows up he shows up and he says peace be with you and he showed them his hands and he showed them his sides. Uh, then the disciples were glad they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Uh, let me speak two seconds right quick before we press into this Pentecost message about order of operation. Uh, he says, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Uh, in order to really be what we need to be, we have to have peace. And in order to have peace, we have to keep our minds stayed on the Lord. And when we begin to look at this, uh, uh, Jesus says, now that you see me, uh, I'm saying to you again peace unto you and I need some folk that have seen the Lord to go ahead and claim your peace today I need some folk that have seen the Lord show up and seen the Lord show out and seen the Lord overcome and seen the Lord deliver and seen the Lord make a way out of nowhere and seen the Lord bring you over to go ahead and claim your peace today again the Lord is saying peace unto you again the Lord is saying if I did it before I can do it again again Again, the Lord is saying, I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Again, the Lord is saying, your enemy will not take over you. Again, the Lord is saying, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Again, the Lord is saying, nothing is too hard for me. Again, the Lord is saying, I am God, and I am who I am, and anything is possible for me. It may be impossible for man, but it's possible for me. Again, the Lord is saying, get your mind Stay it on me and I'll keep you in perfect peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Again, I say to you, peace be unto you. The Lord is saying, I'm tired of y'all running around here being scared of everything. I'm tired of you all running around hiding from stuff. The Lord says, I am here. I've been here. I'm doing what I said I was going to do. I have power to overcome no matter what it is. And I need you to walk around with some peace, but you can't have peace if you won't keep your mind stayed on me. Then he says, if you have peace, then as the Father sent me, I send you. 
part of the reason that many of us are not as obedient as we should is because we don't have peace. And why don't we have peace? Because we got our minds on everything other than the Lord. So we can't go when the Lord sends us. And so then what does he say? Order of operation. And order of operation means we got to be in order. And if we don't go in order, then we get the wrong answer and things don't work out the way that they're supposed to. So you have to discern and be obedient so you can get the attachments. You have to put God first so you can have peace, so you can go when he says go, so you can get all that he says he has for you. Because now he says, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them. And said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So I'm trying, I hear you. I, I'm trying to keep my mind stayed on the Lord. Uh, uh, but uh, every time I'm trying, uh, I get distracted because this is going on and that is going on. And if it's not one thing, then it's another. And I was trying and I thought things were going well. Uh, and then this blew up and I was trying and I had everything in order. Then I lost my job and I was trying and I had this in order. But then this happened to my health. I was trying uh, and then I thought this was working and everything looked to be moving on the up and up and then something happened to my children. I, I was trying and everything looked like it was together uh, and then this happened and then that happened and then uh, now I don't know what's going on and it's very hard. Yes, I believe the Lord. Yes, I know the Lord can make a way but it, it's hard right now for me. Uh, it, it's hard right now for me to do uh, what it is I'm supposed to do. I don't know how I'm going to make it to the end of the week and the Lord is saying to you too, peace be unto you get your mind stayed on me and I need you to move the way I need you to move and somebody said I'm really trying Lord I'm really trying to move the way you tell me to move it's hard though because every time I try to move somebody discourages me you sound like the man at the pool saying I've been trying to get into the space where I can get blessed but every time I try to get there somebody jumps in front of me somebody does something to me and I can't get what it is that I think I deserve uh, but the Lord is saying listen to me I need you to get your mind stayed on me I need you to move when I tell you to move and now I'm breathing on you uh, and I need you to receive the Holy Spirit uh, here it is we're into Pentecost now somebody say I receive it I, I tried to teach us to learn how to receive some stuff uh, somebody open up your mouth and say I receive it I, I, I receive it what the Lord is suggesting to somebody right about now is I see you. I'm trying to give you peace. I'm giving you instructions, but you got to learn now how to receive the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? The Bible says he breathed on them. And then what does that mean? He said now that I breathe on you, I need you to now receive the Holy Spirit. And I need somebody right about now to say I receive it. What are you receiving? When you receive the Holy Spirit, uh, you receive the power to outlast anything. Uh, what does that mean, somebody, right about now? Uh, I need you to understand trouble doesn't last always, uh, which is why you got to learn uh, to outlast trouble. And that's why the Lord sent the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's not too hard for you. Uh, you just got to outlast it. Uh, that's not too much for you. Uh, you just got to outlast it. Uh, that's not going going to take you out. Uh, you just got to outlast it. Uh, and so the Lord says uh, to his disciples, uh, receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm breathing on you. Uh, and when I breathe on you, uh, that expands your lung capacity. Uh, and when it expands your lung capacity, uh, you can go further. Uh, and the Lord is saying right about now, when you receive the Holy Spirit, uh, you can go further. Uh, you can go longer. Uh, you can do more more than you thought you could. Uh, somebody say, I receive it. Uh, yes, life is going to life. Uh, yes, problems are going to problem. Uh, yes, health is going to be challenged. Uh, yes, finances are going to be challenged. Uh, yes, marriages are going to be challenged. Uh, yes, kids are going to challenge you. Uh, yes, jobs are going to come and go. Uh, yes, things are going to be difficult every now and then. Uh, but somebody say, I receive the power to outlast anything uh, that 
that comes up against me, uh, I receive uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, why? Because the Holy Spirit comes uh, to remind you of what the Lord says uh, and to empower you uh, to move beyond uh, what you're going through. Uh, and the Holy Spirit wants to remind somebody today uh, that the Lord said, I will never leave you uh, nor forsake you. The Holy Spirit wants to remind somebody uh, that the Lord said, I'll be a fence all around you uh, every day. Uh, the Holy Spirit wants to remind somebody uh, that the Lord is a very present help uh, in the time of trouble. Uh, the Lord wants to remind somebody today uh, that they who wait upon the Lord uh, shall mount up with wings uh, as an eagle uh, and they shall soar. Uh, the Lord wants to remind somebody today uh, that I know the plans I have for you. Uh, plans to prosper you. Plans for your future and not to harm you. Uh, the Lord wants to remind somebody today uh, that all things work together for the good of those who love me uh, and work according to my purposes. Uh, I'm breathing on you today. I need somebody to receive the Holy Spirit which then gives you the power to outlast whatever you're going through. Trouble don't last always. And so yes, you're going through what you're going through. Yes, it doesn't feel good. Yes, it doesn't make sense. Yes. But you are in a unique position because the Lord has found you where you are. Scared as your little scared behind may be. Stuck where you're stuck. Locked in where you've locked yourself in. And he says, peace. He's breathing on you for the experience of you being able to outlast whatever you go through in a certain way. He's not breathing on you so that you might outlast trouble so you can act however you want to act, talk however you want to talk, move however you want to move, do however you want to do. That's not what the Holy Spirit is doing. The Holy Spirit is moving and breathing and providing power for you to outlast trouble so you can God the glory, so that you can get God the glory, so that you can get God the glory. So that you can get God the glory. And so when you've been uh, able to get through, uh, you now owe God some glory. Uh, when God kept you, you now owe God some glory. Uh, when God got you over, you now owe God some glory. Uh, when God brought you out, you now owe God some glory. Uh, when God got you that job, you now owe God some glory. When God blessed your children, now you now owe God some glory. When God kept your mind, you now owe God some glory. Uh, when God did what he did, you owe God glory. He helped you to outlast what should have taken you out. He breathed on you. Uh, now you have received it. Uh, now the Holy Spirit is working on your behalf and you owe God some glory. You can't walk around here talking how you want to talk, doing what you want to do, being how you want to be. You owe God glory. And on this Pentecost Sunday, it's another reminder that it's time not tomorrow, but right now. To get God the glory. So I'm praying for you today that you might begin to move in such a way that says, I receive the Holy Spirit. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Please. Breathe on me. Because you breathe on me, you then give me the power to outlast. And when I outlast, I then am duty bound to get God the glory. Some of you all haven't even received it, and you just know that you've been able to outlast some things. God has gotten you through some things. What you consider now what it means to get God the glory? Would you consider now what it means to live for the Lord? Would you consider now what it really means to be a Christian, one that has received the blessing of the Lord? And now you say, I want to change my life to live for the Lord. Somebody's saying, just as they did on the day of Pentecost, what must I do? 
to be saved. What we then understand the answer to that to be is that if you'll confess with your mouth that you're a sinner, and if you'll realize that Jesus died for your sins, you cannot get all that God has for you without Jesus vouching for you because we've messed up too much to even be acceptable and to get to the ears of God if it had not been for Jesus that opened up that alleyway, opened up that line of communication for us. But he has to be able to vouch on your behalf and say, yeah, that's mine. That's, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, yeah, they're with me. That's what salvation means. That Jesus will now vouch for you and say, he, she's with me which then gives you access to all God has for you. Because without that, we're not acceptable unto the Lord. Jesus makes us so through his sacrifice on the cross. And so when we accept Jesus and we live for Jesus, that's the place in which we then move into the kingdom of God. And then we are able to take hold of the blessings of God for our lives and so that is what we then say is the process of salvation which means are you saved have you allowed yourself to confess with your mouth do you really believe in your heart uh, that he died for your sins that he got up on the third day and rose with all power in his hands today you have an opportunity to be saved today you have an opportunity for the lord to say this is my brother this is my sister in Christ and you have an opportunity now to begin to move to all God has for you and if you want to take advantage of that opportunity all you have to do to say is say yes in the chat box yes that's me yes I, I want to be saved and once you're saved then you have to move from salvation to being a practicing Christian what does that mean that means discerning what God is saying and being obedient realizing that he gives you the ability to do whatever it is you need to do if you want to do it. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. That's what the Holy Spirit is trying to help us to do. But also, that's what pastors help us to do. And that is to help us to move according to the word of God, uh, to help us to understand what God may be saying to us, to lead us and to guide us. That's what the shepherd does. And my name is Christopher Paul Burnett. And I would love to be a pastor to walk with you and to talk with you and to lead you to places you didn't even know God wants to take you. And so today, if you don't have a church home today, if you're not saved again, all you have to do is put yes in the chat box. And we're watching and there are people that are ready to respond to you to help you come into this body of Christ and you can be a member of St. Stephen's wherever you are watching from right about now. We can communicate with you. You can do everything that we do from where you are right about now. And so today if you indeed feel connected to what we're doing, you want to be part of this ministry. Uh, we do what we do every day virtually. We do what we do every week virtually. We get up in the mornings and we call it the daily pursuit. We get up in the morning at 7 a.m. We stop at 12 noon. We conclude every day at 8 p.m. You can do that from wherever you are. It's a daily pursuit. And if you do, I promise you, God will begin to move in your life in ways you cannot even imagine. And so today I pray that you would join the daily pursuit. I pray today that you would join the ministry of St. Stephen's. And I pray today that as you do, God would grow you. But before you Leave this space and being. Don't forget to give. We've been trying to ask people to really worship God, and you worship God through your giving. You don't work. This is why I keep on saying just because you go to a worship experience, you didn't necessarily do anything for God because you came here to get something. If you get something and you leave and you give nothing, what did you do? We give, and that's our sign of worship. We give our obedience. We give according to what God says, and God has asked of us to give the tithe. So now receive this tithing testimony that you might be inspired to give as well. All right, Ms. Javoda Todd, when we come to these spaces, oftentimes people get nervous, but there's no reason to be nervous about what you know. Nobody can tell your testimony like you can tell your testimony. And Miss Todd comes today to give us her tithing testimony. And so, Miss Todd, tell us 
why you tithed, how you became a tither, and what you've now realized after being a tither. Okay, listen, uh, God is good. That's all, like, he's great. And um, I learned to tithe at an early age. My mother taught us how to tithe. And um, uh, from that, uh, she said, she used the words, if you don't give your tithes, you're stealing. <laughs> so I said, oh, okay. So she would give us money to put in church every day, uh, every Sunday, just about. And whenever she gave us the money, we took a tithe out. Um, so after that, uh, you know, we, I got older and I stopped going to church. And after that, uh, things were beginning to fall apart. Fall apart. I mean, life was it, was, it was a challenge. But to make a long story short, when I really gave my heart to the Lord and I started reading his word, uh, especially in Malachi and then in, in Corinthians, and I love it because on our, on our envelopes here at church, he says, God loves a cheerful giver, the one whose heart is in their giving. And I'm telling you, ever since I've been giving, since the time I was saved, I was 26 years old, and um, ever since then, I can't wait to give my tithe. I'm not being braggadocious. I'm bragging on God, what he can and you do. You want to brag on God. Yes. Brag on I'm God. Brag on God. Um, I was 30 years old when I purchased my first, when I purchased my house. And from that day to the day I sold it, when I moved to Maryland, I never missed the mortgage payment. And it, it was always on time, just like he is always on time. So I give him the glory for that. Since I moved to Maryland, to him be the glory, I never miss paying my rent because I take my tithes and I give it to him. I take it out first. Nike has a slogan, just do it. You can't think about it, just do it. Give it all to him. There's a lot I can tell, but I know that God is able when you give the best of your service, he will do it. He says, just do it. I understand an actual, actual tithe is giving God one-tenth of whatever I earn. Um, and to me, it's a pleasure to be able to give that. Uh, today, I can say I don't want for anything because he, he, he blesses me. If I find money on the street, I take a tenth out and give it to him. If somebody gives me money for my birthday, I take a tenth out and give it to him because he deserves it. I'm not giving it to the pastor. I'm not going I'm giving it because he said, uh, if I give, you know, it, 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 to give and it's meat for his house, you know, things in the church has to be paid. So God gave me the ability to do that. And also, he loves a cheerful giver. Awesome. Awesome. And so, we give 10% of everything that God gives. Yes. And your mother told you that if you don't give the 10%, you're what? Stealing from God. All right, and so we thank Ms. Javoda Todd today for the tithing testimony, and I'm really praying that you would be obedient in your giving. That is your worship unto the Lord for real, for real. Uh, and uh, not only is it just about your money, but it's your time, it's your talent, is what you give of all that you receive from God back unto God. And so I pray that you have been faithful uh, for real, for real. Hallelujah. Now let's receive the benediction now unto him. Who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond all we know to ask or can imagine according to the power that works within you? To him be glory in the church. And all the people of God said amen, amen, and amen.